All right, in my last video, I explained to you how to install Alpine.js. You can just drop a script tag in. And then I also told you how you have to tell Alpine where you're going to be working. And I told you to do that with the X data attribute. So you can see in my code sample here, I've minimized everything to just that. So how do we actually start using X data? Well, you could begin by creating a simple attribute and creating a JavaScript object directly within the attribute. Now within this, I can begin defining variables. So I'm gonna go ahead and create three of them and I'll drop them in here like so. Fix the formatting a tiny bit. And you can see I have a first name, I have a last name, and I have an age. Now these are all simple variables, but I can do arrays, I can do objects, I can do arrays of objects. I can get as complex here as I would like. And in fact, I can even begin to create simple methods. So I'll drop this one in here as well. And you can see I have three variables, first name, last name, and age. And I have a function full name uh, that can use those variables by referring to the this scope. All right. In this particular application, I now have three variables and one method. And I could just keep adding more stuff in here to create my application, essentially. Now, if you're looking at this and thinking, that's really cool, that's really simple and practical, uh, but it may get a little messy, then great, because I had the exact same thought when I saw Alpine the first time. I thought, yeah, this is great for prototyping, but I, I don't necessarily know if I want to type everything in there. Don't worry. Later on, I'm going to show you a great way to take care of that. All right. Now, one last thing I want to point out. Yes, this is a working Alpine JS application. I've defined variables, I've defined methods, <laughs> but not a darn thing is actually being rendered in my browser. Well, you'll have to see how to actually use this information in the next video.